Hi there, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be discussing about Route 53. I'll be showing you um, how we can utilize it, like uh, how we can have a reliable and a cost-effective setup we can have in uh, Route 53. How we can set up the DNS, what is the uh, um, DNS records we can create, and how we can do the mapping and all. So I'll be using my existing website to showcase you the details. So three four things are involved in this so just have a look into it later on we can if you need some help or something we can have a live session for that also but i will show you most of the things in this video so let's start with just a basic introduction about the route 53 so you might be knowing 53 is a dns port that is we, we on the base of that this name is being um, devised by the aws so it is a reliable and cost-effective way to route end user to the internet applications. And it also helps the end users like a site reliability with a, a global dispersed domain name that is a DNS servers and automatic scaling is also there. We can set up and uh, we can also set up the geolocations and all. And it is within minutes, it will be done with the domain registration and we can see the traffic flow tools and all, lots of things are there under one uh, panel, under one dashboard, you can say. So we can customize those things, policies, reduce the latency, improve the application ability and maintain some compliance or some policies that we want to do. Also, we can do the governance of the, uh, of the traffic and all those things we can also do in this Route 53. So just a basic idea, uh, how does it work? So you can see end user, there is a DNS resolver is there. So you should have like basics about what is DNS or what are name because A, uh, 4A, C name and all those things. Then it will be easier to understand all the concepts of this uh, route 53 and how does this authorize this DNS service? It returns the IP address. And it's also performed the health checks on the, our, if you are running EC2 instances, so it will perform the health check. So you can have endpoint instances also, you can have AWS Management Console that help you to do this, or we can have a SDK that also help us to perform this. And we can also have some CloudWatch metrics that will help us to monitor and allow, set up some alarms on the basis of that. So lots of things are there. So what I'm going to show you is like uh, how to just start with the basic purchasing a domain that we can do and a cost effective way like we can have our own portfolio and all or a website. So even my website is also running on that $12 domain. So it's, it's a cost effective. I just need to pay a point zero five uh, dollars we can see the pricing of the record so each record that you create so it is being monthly bill so it, the cost comes around like eighteen dollars a year for that so i think that is cost effective so we can utilize the s3 bucket for hosting our uh, static website say but if you want to run an ec2 instance and you have your own certain application that you want to run so that also you can configure it so let's move on to the console. So this is the dashboard. So you can see already I have a DNS management over here. So the very first thing that you have to do over here, the register domains it is showing for me. So you can see this is my domain that is already registered. So you can just uh, now, if you go for the transfer domain, uh, you can do that, but it will take around like uh, 72 hours in order to transfer the domain. So if you are starting afresh, so I would recommend you to uh, buy the domain from here. Only. It is instantly and it is you can start working immediately on this particular things. So you can click on the registered domain. So I'll just type it over here. My just cloud tech website. I hope this domain is not there. You can see the price is $13. Okay, so we have dot at $11. We can have a co.uk also there. So different different pricings are there. So I hope you are clear about the domains, subdomains, and all those things. 
So, or you can just go to the Google and just refresh those the basics yourself. So you can see we have lots of options over here. I just let me stick to this one. I'm not going to purchase, I'm just showing you. You can click the check option over here. So you can see it's available. My just cloud technology website, anything, whatever it is, add to cart. Then you just uh, continue and you can proceed. So uh, there is some pricing details also there for queries and all those things. How much DNS management and all. So no end of going through that. It is we can see while creating a records or whatever we are going to do. So once you purchase this one, it will automatically after purchasing, you can go to your registered domains over here. It will start showing over here. So once you click on this, you can. Uh, this my details are coming. So make it show. Uh, uh, if you want to automatically renew, you can make it automatically renew and uh, uh, contact details and all. You can see a transfer lock also you can maintain it. You can enable this one. And this is NS records are there. So this is going to map to your domain. And uh, domain name status, operation code, registration date. And also we can uh, like edit the contact details and all those things you can do it. So if you have some, if it is not approved, it will go to the pending or if you are transferring some domain, it will go to the this pending request. Now, after purchasing this domain, you can just directly go to the dashboard over here. So you can see over here, there is a one uh, registered domain, transfer your existing domain to root 53 and all those things are coming to one hosted zone. So once you click on this, or you can just go from here, hosted zones. Create hosted zone. So I already have over here hosted zone. So once you click on the create hosted zone, you need to enter the domain name and uh, description. Now here are the caches, uh, public hosted zone or private hosted zone. So make it sure if you are having an internet facing uh, uh, traffic is routed on the internet. So make it sure it is a public hosted zone. But if it is within a VPC, like uh, like you know, in the company internal network on the internet, they want to utilize those uh, your application. So we, we we prefer using this private hosted zone. So within a VPC, it will be accessible. So and it's not internet facing. So make it sure if you are using for some internet facing, just go for this public hosted and create hosted zones. So I have already created over here for mine website. So you can see over here, there are many uh, records are being created. So uh, so this is the A record. Now here you might get confused. By default, it will be uh, pointing towards uh, the, the def default ones. These NS records will be there. So this will be missing, A record. And uh, I think uh, this uh, these two C names, these are coming from the certificate manager. And this one also, this one coming from the cloud front. These two are coming from the cloud front. Now you might be seeing they are double double are there, one for the www.justcloudtech.com and one is just cloudtech.com. So basically in order to get the HTTPS and all, so we need to create two separate. You can just watch my previous video. I have made one video how to host a uh, static website and how we can get the HTTPS. Just a small two minutes video is there. You can just go through it. If you have any problems, then I can just make a new video related to that. So, uh, so basically, what is happening? Um, I'm having like my static file saved in a S3 bucket. So I will show you over here. So you can see over here. I'm having this bucket over here. You can see. So inside this bucket, I'm having all the files over here. It is a static record and I have given the properties in order to make it publicly accessible. So you need to make it show static record hosting. You can see it has been enabled. So this is the by default URL that will be there for your bucket, but we want to make it show 
need to map it with our domain. So in order to do that, we have to use a cloud front. So basically when you're going to add the A record, so when you create the record over here, so you can see over here record name, A record, that will be just cloudtech.com, routes traffic to an IPv4 address and some AWS resources. So basically we are using that. So here you can see uh, we'll be getting this option plus uh, once you click on the, these are all the values and create records, it will automatically give you the mapping to the, so this is basically using a simple routing. We can have a geolocation, latency based and weight routing also. So we can also do that. So let me show you one thing. So if you go to this A record, that is basically, uh, you can see over here, this is the value. So this is the cloud front. There is one video for the cloud front also, how we can utilize that. So basically, uh, once I go to the cloud front, I need to make a distribution over here, create a distribution. So I made the distribution for this. You can see the origin, that is my bucket. It is basically. So this CloudFront distribution has been made and in which I am doing this uh, mapping from this CloudFront to the, you can see. So when you make over here in the setting, when you define uh, this metrics over here, so that time you need to define, you can see origin name, origin domain. That is a path that we're having for the S3. So these things we need to define and behavior, it is default behavior and redirect HTTP to HTTPS. Basically this is being done in order to get, even though if I type over here, um, just cloud tech. So, so you can see that is basically it's showing the HTTPS, or if I type www uh, just cloud tech, then also it will be coming the same. So that's a small thing. So once you enable this in the cloud front, so we need to make this uh, a distribution. You can also add some error pages over here. You can also make geographic restrictions like uh, your website should not be accessible from some countries or anything like that. You can define it. You can define the countries over here. Like uh, like you don't want your uh, like websites to be like if you if you're from India you don't want your website to be like access from other neighboring countries or something like that so you can restrict from here and uh, one more thing like invalidation is there like uh, for caching and all you need to clear it and another thing is that uh, you might be getting some uh, error with this uh, TLS version this one. So those who will be watching my old videos and all will be finding that there is TLS version 1.0, I think by default. But nowadays it is not being used. So make it sure you have the TLS version 1.2. If you're using the older version, it, your website will stop working. So make it sure this TLS version is 1.2 over here. So this is very tricky. So you start getting there suddenly uh, if you're using the older version. But by default, nowadays it is picking up the newer version. So once you set up this, so basically we are mapping our S3 bucket with the CloudFront and CloudFront is uh, mapping to our uh, this uh, DNS over here. So this is how it is working. So I have created this one and this, you might be thinking about this C names. So this is coming basically from the certificate manager. So let me open the certificate manager. So in order to, it is free from the AWS, so you can get one certificate from your website. Nowadays they have made some changes. They are they have been like um, moving to some other brand, uh, something versioning list certificates. You can see uh, some issue elliptic curve digital signature algorithm they are using from certificates from ACM. So I haven't updated this one, but if you see over here, uh, you first need to request the certificate. So um, make it sure in a day, I think uh, you can make a maximum of three requests. So if you make more mistakes, so you need to wait, I think for 72 hours or something like that. So make it sure you are doing the things in the one go. So don't make any mistakes. So you need to request a public certificate, public SSL and TLS certificate from Amazon so that you can use it by browsers and operating systems. So I can show you, so, let me show you over here. If you click next over here, you can see fully qualified domain name, you have to put it and see DNS validation. So it will automatically validate and it will add these two 
uh, records over here in the you can see ACM Amazon certificate manager validations are there even if I click over here you can get more detail about it let me so you can see this is the validations so it is coming from the AWS certification manager in order to get the ICT key yes and all so so this is also no need to worry it will get automatically added to your domain once it is being validated for validation it takes like 50 to 20 minutes so you need to wait for that so you can see you can choose over here which kind of algorithm you want and you can proceed next better make it dns validation if you want to make email validation you will get email on the email that was being registered to purchase the domain so make it sure if you're having access to the email and all otherwise you can directly do the dns validation that is the most easiest way so if i go to my list certificate over here I think uh, some some issues are there. Let me check my certificate over here. I think it's a valid one, but uh, okay, that's fine. let me go to this one again i think once it is being added successfully it is gets removed from this so you need to request a new one you cannot see the list of imported once you a request is approved once it is being then it will start listing over here once you utilize that then it is gone so that will get inserted in your route 53 so no need to worry so this is how we are maintaining the records so it is quite a little bit a um, little bit complicated but just first in order to start you can just purchase a domain then you can start uh, with the s3 bucket or you can just start with the s3 bucket just let it uh, you can host it directly from the s3 as a static website using the bucket urls making it public that you can use it later on you can utilize with the cloud fund distribution so map your uh, S3 bucket with the cloud fund distribution and then later on use that uh, cloud fund distribution in the A records rather than redirecting it to a S3 bucket. So cloud fund distribution is very useful. It will help you to cache the records and all these things. It will be, uh, like reduce the latency also. So we need to have reduced latency and your website will be much faster also. So you can see over here. Basically, I'm not keeping anything in this. So that is basic rule how to uh, get the HTTPS and all. So if you want to do, utilize this, you can just watch my previous video. I'll provide the link in the description of this video. So you can have a quick look onto it. And in case of any difficulties, you just can uh, comment on my video. So I will try to make a live session with those uh, interested. So we can set up some schedule or set up some date on which I'll be coming live. So I can uh, help you live on that particular things. I hope you get a little bit um, clear idea about Route 53. Please do like, share and comment on my videos if you have any problems. And thanks for watching.